folks, I'm Kevin. Welcome back to the shop. This time on part two of the 541 inch stroker build, we're going to look at uh, hanging some pistons on rods, uh, a couple little details about that, and have a good look at the clearance issues in the bottom end of the block. Fits pretty well, but not quite as well as you hope it does. So um, without uh, messing around anymore, let's, uh, let's get busy and take a look. Now to put these little rascals together, it is a, a floating pin, and they just they just slide in inside there, and it should be a loose fit, a loose sliding fit. Should have no rattle, no chatter, no nothing like that. It's it's tight in that direction, but it slides very easily without an issue. Um, the rods are bushed and they need to take these pins the same way. Uh, you can see that that one's a little tight. I was playing with it a little bit earlier and this will go in just a little bit on one side. If you get it lined up just right it slides in. It's a little stiff and then going out the other side it gets a little tight. Um, that's not going to work out too well for us. really need to clearance this. But again, you can't have any rattle, can't have any slop, and if you try to go in there and cut that bronze back, you're going to have a big issue, and you're going to end up ruining your connecting rod. What I've done is taken a, just a little, just a piece of random quarter inch stock, you can see how I just kind of hacked it off, and I uh, just cut a little slot down in it with a Dremel, it didn't have to be straight or dead center or anything like that, and then I took some of this mirror fine 2000 grit sandpaper just cut a little chunky off I'm gonna stick this in the drill and put that up in there and just spin it up and just use it to uh, just barely hone this rod and it'll come out with a real nice finish and again micro fine 2000 grit Okay, this is a milling machine, not exactly a drill, but hey, you can still use it as a drill, it works. Um, we're going to take this little rascal, slide them on up in there, and it gives just a nice little buff in place here. Um, again, we've got the rod, over, uh, the rod and the wrist pin. It kind of starts, it's a little stiff, and that's on the side with the lettering. The other side, it tends to go in okay. So, let's just crank it up. And just holding it by hand with, you can just push it up in there. Just give it a little bit of buffing action like that. And because of the 2000 grit, it takes a little while to get, uh, to get the work done. So just give it a little bit. Same thing. Just crank the speed up. And because this is essentially a flap wheel, it doesn't matter if you get a little close to one side or the other. Uh, with this kind of grit and this little force being put on it, it's not really going to wallow it out in one direction more than the other. already sliding a lot better. Let me give it just one more quick little Okay. And this is safe. I mean, it's just it's 2000 grit sandpaper. If you get your finger in there, it's not going to hurt you on this one. So, it's a good idea to be a little careful, but let's not go crazy about it. Uh, 
Okay, and you see that slides in there real nicely now. There's no play, there's no run, there's no slop in it. And you can see that it didn't really take off much material here. Um, again, we're looking to just buff it a few ten thousandths of an inch. So, okay, let's go back over to the bench. All right, I said we'd be back at the bench. Here we go, back at the bench. Now you uh, you saw how the the intake valve needed to be to the that way, and this little guy needs to be that way. So just flip them over, and the pin should slide in without too much resistance. Oh, almost forgot. Let's uh, give it a little love juice here. Um, just a little touch. And we'll put the rod in there and slicker it up, or uh, slicker it up some. Or put the pin in it. So, again, we've got uh, the chamfer opposite of the intake valve. So we just drop them in. Get in there. There we go. Now, um, easy part's done. And you can see that it moves, it doesn't wiggle, it doesn't lean. That's a nice fit. Now you've got to get that little rascal and that little groove right there. Okay, so I brought you around this side where I can get to it a little bit better, and I still can't see it because the camera's in the way, and you're not gonna be able to see it because my hand's gonna be in the way. So uh, you've got the little groove inside here for this little ring, and you got your rusty, trusty, always crusty little scurvy driver. You'll end up needing them eventually. Um, you just kind of start it, try to get these little rings, uh, these little ends down on the bottom of the groove, and so you can get them out a little bit easier when that time comes and you just kind of work the thing around there we go get in there you get the start going it gets a little easier in the middle and then you get to the end So just kind of weasel it around. Sometimes you, it's kind of funny because you have to work the opposite side of the ring um, just to make room. Do I get this one in without too much gratuitous use of the screwdriver? Yes. Listen for the snap. There you go. Now that whole little rascal is inside the groove. Kind of hard to see, the lighting's horrible. Um, see if I can help you out with that. That little rascal's all inside that groove. Boom. Pin doesn't come out. It's stuck. Rings a little further around than I like, but so be it. This side's a little bit easier because, well, you've got a piston there to push it against. So we'll do the same old thing. We'll find the ends of it. Stretch it out a little bit. Not be bashful about it. Ooh, that's a nice boingy little spring. Okay. Let's see that one. Went. It started off pretty nice without too much fuss. And can we get the click? There we go. It's in. No screwdriver needed on that one. So consider that a badge of honor. Okay. Next step is getting the uh, getting the rings on the uh, on the piston. Um, oil rings do have a uh, do have a gap that needs to be set, 
and um, these I've already checked them out these were good out of the box their gap is a little wider than necessary but it's well within specs now this one is the uh, is the oil control I mean the oil ring support that goes in there and you can uh, you can kind of make out the little pip right there the little bump it's just caused by a divot on this side and uh, they, they punch that little rascal and leave the little pimple in it so that, so it'll ride in this gap right here uh, that way when the oil ring is moving around as the engine runs the oil ring can't drop down into this little gap hit it keep expanding and stretch out and start rubbing on the cylinder wall and turn up your motor. I have the Knipix pliers wrench. These are smooth jaws and they move parallel to one another. Um, so they're really good at grabbing things like these rings. Um, and unlike most of them, this one is kind of a spring. It's not a cast iron ring, so these are a little more forgiving. You can be a, a little... Uh, a little more creative putting these things on so um, trying to keep them absolutely gouging the piston oh now I need to find that little pokey bit he's right there He's a little pip right here. Uh, we've got him in place where he's right uh, in this gap where he needs to be. Um, next step is going to be putting the uh, putting the oil ring in, and getting that little rascal back down there where he needs to be. Let's slap around. center of the oil ring to kind of help push the little guy around uh, the oil control for that support ring down there where is it hanging up right here there we go get in there all right good that kind of right there by the gap so let's slide that around a little ways and let's put the top one on I'm sorry I'm sliding you guys out of out of camera view see how much parts we got down there and it's a new day but I guess the change of shirts kind of gave that away um, there's no fooling you folks um, I've mentioned a 541 inch motor and the title is regarding a 543 inch kit well it, this engine has a uh, 4.375 inch bore and a four and a half inch stroke that makes it a 541 and a bit um, if I had gone to a 60 overbore, uh, then it would be a 542 and a bit. 
And that's where 440 Source decided to kind of take a little bit of POEG license and slide it up, round up to 543 because 543 is more than 541 and more is gooder, right? There you go. So, now I've already done all the grinding. I've got all that put together. But when I was editing the video, I realized things were getting a little bit longer than what I wanted. And I'm trying to keep these down to about 15 minutes. So, I am going to go ahead and cut this one off here. And then we'll pick up with the, uh, the block work and some of the new toys that have come in uh, on the next episode of this thing. So... Thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you again then.